Oh, I have faith in people. Mm. You know, I do. I, I think that we're the only ones that can, can change anything. You know, we, we have to look within ourselves. We really do. And we have to look to the people we trust and know to kind of get somewhere with anything. Whether it's, you know, leaning on someone for something that you, you trust and you know can, can get you through a certain thing or to help you build something. I mean, you look at the whole world as an, as an entire thing. I think it's a little difficult to go through daily life with this notion of freedom. I think it has to be in your world. It's, it's, I know what you mean. It's personal. Freedom yeah, is personal. personal. That's it. If I were scoring a movie about your life, what song would I have to use? Um, there's a new there's a new song by Jay Z out that's called Ambitious. You can do it. Like people tried to tell me I couldn't, but I'm definitely gonna do it. You know, and it's I don't know. It's just like it makes me feel so good to hear that song. It's so funny. Like I'll be walking around, and I'm like thinking to myself, I wish everybody could hear this song. Mm -hmm. You know, I want them to feel that way too. Hear it the way you hear it. Yeah. Experience it. Yeah. The way you experience it. Yeah. I think I get it because I just feel happy. I feel happy knowing that that I'm I'm doing something finally for myself, and um, I spent a lot of time being sort of anchored by other people, and now I feel like I'm I'm my own sort of anchor in a way. Um, so, I mean, I'm still finding that, you know, that the balance, I think, in life, but I definitely feel like I can get up now feeling like it's there. I just have sort of the way I went about finding school was sort of, I think, a response to needing something more. And the way it happened was I was at a small liberal arts college at the time, and just kind of, again, followed the herd. Everyone was going off to college, and so did I. And I picked a small school because I at least knew that I didn't want to get lost sort of in the big mix of a huge school. So I did that, and then I took a photography course that just um, just like changed my life forever. I was talking to my photography professor one day, we were having a critique, and it was my first one ever. And I didn't even know what that meant. I just knew like I didn't want anybody to like grade what I was doing, but I kind of felt like I just basically said, you know, I think you should look into art school. Why not? At the time, the art schools were asking for actual slides that had to be handwritten. Here's the title, the materials used, the date. All that. So I put together this whole bunch of slides uh, of my work, and I felt really very silly about it. But again, I was like, what the heck? So, um, so I sent it off. I sent them off to Chicago and DC, and I got in, and that was it. And I didn't tell anybody about it, which I think was a huge turning point for me because not even telling my friends, my mother, it was it was a huge moment for me. So, um, why the secret? I didn't want to be judged. I didn't need it. I didn't want it. It was like. I just don't need the criticism. I'm doing this. And it was just, like I said, it was maybe it was just to that idea that I, I shipped myself off to college and I, I had made at least that move. So I was like, you know how you kind of like your confidence grows over time? Yes. So, <laughs> yes. yes. So it just, it's all baby steps. Um, well, I had a school in DC after, after going to art school. I, um, I had another school called Fingers of Play. And uh, with a friend of mine, and um, so it was something that I was familiar with. Once I was in New York, I knew I could always go back to it. But it was, I think, it was a reaction. I'll, 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 I'll fast forward a little bit. It was definitely an, the art, opening the art room was a reaction to um, needing to get back to myself and my my true roots. I mean, we're talking about the truth. I mean, I had been living this sort of uh, very awkward life as an executive assistant. I mean, it was, 
I knew I could do it. I knew I had the skills and I was building my skill set, you know, but it was like, it was, it was, I mean, it's, it's like living a lie almost. Like it's just not, it's, it just wasn't my authentic self. I, I don't like to think it was anyway because I feel much happier now. But I never thought I could do it again. When I moved here from New York, I thought, I'll, I'll never find the money again. I'll never have the guts to do it again. You know, it was just that sort of reaction of, only get real, you know, it's not, I can't do it. And then I guess, you know, meeting Justin and, and going through certain stages in my life for the last seven years, it just was like a light bulb went off and I said, yep, yeah, I'm gonna do it again. So I literally took a little coffee break. I was working from home one day and I walked Third Avenue and I saw a for rent by owner sign and that was it. It was like that night I wrote them a check. I gave myself no more time to think about it. My goal is to reach as many children as I can with art and let them know that they'll always have it. They'll always have it. And it's not something, again, just it's not something that doesn't matter. It does matter. Whether it's something they want to do very privately, something they want to do very publicly, it's important and it's important for people to see it. I've gone through so many different paths in life on faith and, and I mean if you want to get into like God and things like that. But do you believe in God or a higher being? And if so, where do you experience the presence of something greater? Children make me feel there has to be. There, there just about has to be because when I, I just see how pure they are and and how they touch me every day, like every single one, you know. And it's how can there not be, you know? But I don't know what's behind it, you know. It's what else is there? I think mean, that's what keeps me questioning. Do you think as many children have ADD? as they say you. No. And I think that there's, I mean, there has been for years, there have been so many uh, issues with misdiagnosing and quickly treating and saying, no, we just don't want to deal with this. We're just gonna, we're gonna give this a shot. We're gonna give it a try. And then it becomes what they think it is. It's right. not what it actually is. So. Um, I mean, I will say it's striking to me the amount of children that come in with these issues. Why? I mean, it just doesn't seem like it was ever this much. And I, I think, you know, just a, like as a society, I think we're over medicators and we're also self medicators. So my fear is that what, what will end up happening is these heavily medicated children who become young adults are going to be self-medicators and this will be the whole new sort of line of... It'll be the future. The future. Future. Not people. Mm -hmm. God, people are so strange, you know, when it comes to yeah. education and their children because they are the future and if we're medicating them or over-medicating them and we're under-educating them, yeah. Yeah. where does that leave us in 20 years? I don't know, really. I'm scared. It's interesting, I, I know a school in Brooklyn that's fairly, I'm not sure how long they've been around, I should find out, but they, I, I have a few students from here. Um, it's called the Brooklyn School of Inquiry. And it's a really cool concept because so much of it is like, almost like open play, uh, not open play, that's the wrong word, but like kind of more open forum for children to, to, to almost, you know, they're, they're encouraged to explore a little bit more. And I think, you know, read on your own, watch this on your own, talk amongst yourselves, do this art, explore these blocks, what can you make with it? Like, things like that, that, you know, it's not so like, okay, so here's the kit, we're gonna do it this way. This is something I really, honestly, I struggle with here too, and it's that, People want to come in and they want to learn how to draw a house. I really want my kid to learn how to draw a person. I can show them certain techniques, 
But your child has every right to draw it the, the way they want to draw it. And they will grow. You know, they will grow and they will learn other ways. But right now, here's how they're doing it, and it's fine. Why are we, why are we obsessed with insurance for it? Right. Like coming to you and saying, teach my kid to draw like this. Mm -hmm. It's like, kid's going to draw however he or she draws. That's going to be what it is. It's totally, totally narcissistic success thing. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I, I mean, my kid is the most successful and they're going to be. And that's it. And here's how it's going to happen. And we're going to medicate them if right. we have to. <laughs> we're going to just... Exactly. And we're going to make them draw. <laughs> what advice would you give your younger self? Oh, listen to my heart more. Just let, I mean, when I say that, I don't mean like, you know, oh, my heart says like I shouldn't, you know, do this or whatever. But I just, I, I feel like I never really went with what I really felt I should have been doing. Because I always second guessed myself. And I would just tell myself, don't, don't be afraid. Just do whatever you think would make you feel better or good or safe. Probably meeting my father for the first time. I was 16 and 15. And, um, and I, I mean, I spent all of my life, like up until that point, obviously wondering what he was like, but like really hating him for what he did to my mom and hating that he didn't want anything to do with me and just a lot of resentment, like living with that resentment at every little stage, every year, just feeling a little bit different about it and like, I'm going to write a letter. No, I'm not going to write a letter. I'm just going to forget about it. No, I have to deal with it. I was so confused about what kind of relationship that should be. You know, you're my father, but you're not. You're really not. I'm looking for a friend in you, sure, I am. But I'm looking for you to now, can we try to pick up and try to be this sort of family, family unit? But I, I knew deep down that wasn't possible, but I just thought to myself, maybe we, we can try. And it just, because I think, because of where I was in my life, it just, it just didn't work out. What good so, came of it, though? I think just a piece about, like, just knowing that he's out there. You know? And knowing that he doesn't hate me. You know? Like, I guess not feeling that love all those years was confusing enough. Um, and there was definitely a hole in my heart there that I was always looking to fill. And I, and I, think, I think to some extent I probably still look to fill it. Um, you know, no matter what you know, relationships I've been in. And, um, I try to be as aware, as cognizant as I can be about it now, but I know it's, again, it's one of those hardwired things where you just, you know, okay, I don't have a dad, you know. that no matter what is external to you, what matters is what's inside. What matters is what you feel. You have to trust yourself before you trust others. You have to. And no matter where you find that down the road, if it's when you're 10 years old, 33 years old, it doesn't matter. No matter what, you have to know what's inside of you. And that's how you just have to apply that to other, all the little aspects in life. Um, I just only know that because I've experienced it.